to to address this issue, to, to move away from a combinatorial explosion of different categories, and to move away from this this issue of slow computation. Okay, and it's to use something called specifications. Um, and the idea builds on what we talked about last. So the idea here is that we're going to leverage the ability to, to create hierarchies of specifications um, and to enable combinations of, of specifications. So a specification basically is a, uh, it's a software object that specifies some criteria. It's, it specifies a criteria that has to be satisfied. Okay? Um, and we can then, with the specification, we can ask, does a given, say, person satisfy that criteria? Okay. So we're going to have a, a criteria, perhaps, that asks, okay, um, you know, is this person a certain ethnicity? That would be one sort of specification. And when we give it a person, it will answer whether or not they're the appropriate ethnicity that, that's, that's being asked. Or they could be a predicate. I'm calling them here predicates because I think it has more obvious connotation than specification. Uh, specification is a kind of overloaded term, and we've, we've used other meanings of it in the class. Um, I ca I'll call it, in this case, a uh, predicate. We might have a sex predicate that asks, is this person a male? Another sex predicate, is this person a female? And, and if we had a predicate, it's an object, and we can send that, uh, can ask that object by calling it, is satisfied by method. Give it a person and say, hey, predicate, does this person satisfy you? And it will say yes or no. So we can have specifications by ethnicity, by, eth uh, by sex, by age, and in fact combinations of them. So what I did within this uh, agent-based uh, ABM model with birth death that I posted to the website, and I'd invite you to look at it um, either with me or separately, is uh, I have, an, I have the, a model which essentially uses these specifications to count things up more quickly within the population and to, to consider combinations without a combinatorial explosion. Okay, So if you go to main, for example, and you go under functions, you'll notice there's a function called count people uh, matching multiple predicates and count people matching predicates. Uh, matching predicate. Okay, so this method here, count people matching predicate, what it takes in as, a, as an argument, as a parameter for that method, is, pre, is a predicate. That's a predicate that specifies some criteria. Okay? And what this method will do, well, what do you think it will do? A method that calls that count people, you could by implication count people in the population that match this predicate. If this method takes in a predicate that judges the suitability of a given person, what are we going to do to count the number of people that match that predicate? Yeah, that's the sort of obvious sort of thing to do. So here we're going to actually go through, and I, because I've implemented this hierarchically, um, it's, it's not obvious, but I basically run through everyone in the population. For each person in turn, I say, hey, does this person match your predicate? Nope. Okay, then, then um, I'll go on to the next person. Next person, when it matches a predicate, I'll increment the count, essentially. But I've done this in a way that I also have a method called count people matching multiple predicates. And that method just goes through the population once. Yeah, and then for, for each person, actually, it just goes through the common specifications and sort of says, hey, it's a set of that one, that one, that one, et cetera. Um, and it increments a count of, of people who match each of the specifications in turn. Okay? So, so here, we're simultaneously in one sweep through the population, counting the number of the match, uh, match different predicates. I'm not only doing that, but I also have a method that's called select people matching predicate. Okay, And what this does is it's going to return, instead of just a count or an array of counts, so you know, count people matching predicate returned a count. It returned uh, an integer, um, because all it did is count the number. Count 
people matching multiple predicates returned an int array, which is uh, basically an array of, 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 uh, of, of the, the number that matches the first predicate, the second predicate, etc. Select pe uh, people matching predicate, that's going to return a collection of persons that match the predicate. So in other words, I'm going to give this a predicate. I call it spec here, but specification, but it's a predicate. And it's going to go through each person in the population. And for each person that matches it, I'm going to accumulate a list of them. And then I'm going to return that list. Okay. So that's going to let me quickly find people who match that predicate. Okay. Um, a list of those people. Yeah. OK, so for example, I might get a list of those people and then go through them and record them through a database. So I might. For example, find all people who have died, or all people who are currently infected, or all people who, you know, have reached um, the infectious stage of TB, and and it might record them away, or print out a list. Um, um, you know, I I might uh, I might uh, highlight them on the screen or what have you. Um, so. This would be one way of using it. I might also have another method. And again, I'm going through this awful quick because of time. But I might have a method that's perform action on people matching predicate. Here, I pass in a predicate, folks. And I pass in an action to perform on those people. So that action might be, for example, an action which, which um, you know, writes that person's information to a database. It might be an action which sends that person a message. It might be an action which intervenes on that person by causing them to no longer be a smoker. It might be an action which, um, uh, you know, uh, removes that person from the population. The point is that I can specify who I want to apply this to with the predicate, and then I can specify the action using another, um, another method, um, a method that might, for example, print out a person or remove them from the population or what have you. So um, that's, a, um, that's a, another powerful way this can be used, to essentially apply interventions to different subsets of the population. Now, where this book really interesting, and this is fairly advanced stuff, but uh, forgive me for, for trying to stretch you one final time with this. Um, uh, one thing that you can do once you have these things specified as predicates is you can avoid the combinatorial explosion. Specifically, what you can do is to examine um, compound predicates that combine one with another. So for example, we can have an and person predicate. And this and person predicate will essentially um, answer, okay, whether a person matches this predicate and this other predicate, or an or predicate, whether they are either y very young or very old, okay? Um, and then we could print out um, uh, information on people matching combinations of categories without needing to create explicit statistics for those. So um, I'd like you to go, go to this um, in, to, in Maine, and you'll notice that in Maine, um, here, uh, so we're going up, going down Maine, um, and and within Maine, you'll see that there's a there's an event, and the event is called Event Reporting Summary Statistics. Okay, this is a, a new event. Okay, and you notice it just makes a call to report summary statistics. Okay, so we're now going to go to report summary statistics. And all this is going to do is to um, so report summary statistics here is just going to go over each of a set of reporting uh, statistics. And it's going to apply that to collect the data, to count the number of people matching the predicate, and then uh, trace the line. Excuse me, this is the naive one. There's actually, I was just looking at the naive one. There's actually a, um, uh, here, report summary. This is the one I want. Um, uh, here, we get a set of, of statistic names to report, a set of predicates to apply for those statistics, and then a set combining those two using that method we saw earlier, count of people matching multiple predicates, 
we get a count of people who match each of those predicates in turn. And then we go through and we report, okay, for this criteria, this many people matched it. For that criteria, that many people matched it. These predicates are just these, these objects that encode conditions. But what I'd like you to look at, this is, is where the rubber meets the road. So that's just um, reporting. I'd like you to go to initialize summary statistics. Okay. What this is going to do is we're going to set this thing up to report the number of people of different categories. And this includes some combination categories. Some categories, for example, First Nations males, First Nations females. And we're going to be able to do that without creating this combinatorial explosion of categories. So here, what we're doing is we're creating a male predicate and we're going to basically record that as something we want to report under the name men. We have a female predicate, we report that in the name females. We were, we're gonna report senior citizens and this is going to be the predicate for that and that's defined as a class, uh, uh, as a class there for, for convenience. First Nations predicate, we're gonna create an ethnicity predicate that's going to encode that. Okay, if they match this ethnicity, then they'll be counted as First Nations. If they match this ethnicity, they'll be counted as Métis. First, if we want to count First Nations males, we create an and person predicate. They have to match first a male predicate and then also a First Nations predicate, in which case they'll be counted as First Nations males. Similarly for First Nations females, Métis females, Métis males. Um, so what we're doing here is we're building up this hierarchy of, of, of predicates and we're combining them in sort of logical ways. Um, we could have a seniors and children predicate. That's an or person predicate. They either have to be a senior citizen or a child, for example. Okay, um, so this is, this is a powerful, um, powerful tool once you start encoding conditions as objects in short. And if you go look at how this is done, it's actually quite straightforward. So there's an interface. You remember we talked about that last time. Uh, we, we, and we introduced the time before that, the notion of separating an interface from an implementation. And as Chris noted, for a given person, for example, there might be many interfaces that apply. Uh, just as for a given computer, there's an acoustic set of standards that apply. There's an there's a, uh, electrical set of standards. There's an ergonomic set of standards. There's a power consumption um, set of standards, et cetera. Uh, here we have an interface that's a person predicate interface that is a single method sa is satisfied by. And then we might, for example, have an age range predicate that implements that interface, but its job is more specialized. It checks whether, for example, they lie between a certain range, age range. So it asks, okay, for the person that's given to it, they have to answer whether or not they satisfy this predicate whether the person who's given to it is their age between the minimum and the maximum age. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, there can be an ethnicity predicate. And the ethnicity predicate, once again, ethnicity predicate implements that, um, that uh, person predicate interface, hence I person predicate, the interface for that. It implements that, so it has to provide an it is satisfied by method. That's what that interface demands. It says anything that, sat, that implements this interface has to provide an is satisfied by um, method. So ethnicity predicate implements an interface. So it provides an is satisfied by method. You give it a person, it will indicate whether or not it satisfies its criteria. And in this case, all it does is it checks, is that person's ethnicity match the ethnicity it expects? Okay. Um, Similarly, there's a child predicate. This child predicate is simply a subclass of age range predicate that checks, okay, are they in the age from zero to 18? Okay, it's just a sort of specialization of that. Um, is an infection state predicate checks, is their infection state a match a certain state? Okay, um, and uh, by Defining these basic predicates, then we can build compound predicates. For example, we can have and person predicate, which takes two predicates. And at given a person, it checks do they satisfy the first and the second predicate. This is advanced stuff. I don't expect this to be all understood at first. Um, 
But what, what I do want to highlight is that this can really simplify simultaneously the computational burden of going through every person in the population many times for, uh, for different criteria. It can further simplify selecting out people in the population that match criteria, intervening on people who match certain criteria within the population. Um, you can just specify them as abstract groups, such as men and women, senior citizens. You don't have to write a separate method for intervening on children, for example. You can have one method to intervene on any subgroup, and then you just specify with the predicate, who do you want to intervene on? And it will apply the intervent appropriate intervention to that subgroup. Okay, so um, I think that's all I will um, comment on here. I'll post the slides, but I want to get on to the process guidelines, okay? I would, I would welcome any questions on this, um, and I would urge you to go through the model. There's an additional model called flu amino epi model that also demonstrates and takes us to uh, even further level. It shows how it can be used to intervene, uh, to intervene with on different subgroups of the population, et cetera. So that specification pattern draws on our notions from, from um, last time on subclassing and typing. Okay. So I'm going to...